that's really cool about these tracks is if you'll kind of familiar yourself with them, uh, especially like this one, it says an IQ test. It says, you know, what's the most important part on this tombstone? And it's the it's the dash in the middle because that's the life you live, you know, and that's where you make your decision for Christ. A lot of times, these, you know, like this one, why is this man on the cross? You know, what if? Thank you. If, if you kind of familiar yourselves with them, or, or even this, this is the one we handed out in New Orleans. Are you ready for this ride? It's got a you know a hearse on there. If you familiar yourself with them, then a lot of times, especially when you're starting out, if you if you if you feel a little braver and you want to talk instead of just you know or or like my or you know did you get one of these? A lot of times I just now I become a little bolder, so I go hey here you go, you know go, okay you know, but but try to familiar yourself yourself with a little bit of because a lot of times it will it will give you what to say already you know really well. and then if you and you say well you know, I'm, I'm telling them what's on it well okay that's fine you know I, and I'll be completely honest before I started going on the street and sharing the gospel I didn't think tracks worked I really didn't I thought they were useless I thought they were worthless but you know what <clears throat> they do work and the thing that's cool about tracks is they preach the gospel for you when you don't have the time because, like, for instance, when we, when we were in Mardi Gras, there was thousands of people just, it was like a wave of people. And I didn't have a chance to each one of them, you know, hey, you know, with this, or hey, whatever. I mean, people were walking so fast that I didn't have a chance to talk to them. And the thing about this is this will preach the gospel for you when you're not there. Yes. They're small enough, even, even these bigger ones, they're small enough that people can put them in their back pocket, their shirt pockets, their wallet. I mean, you, you find them all the time, people will, will do that. Yeah, there will be some people... That throw them on the ground, but hey, you know, pick them back up and give them to somebody else, you know. And and and, uh, and people will read them later, you know. A lot of times when we're out there, drunk people, and, and we hand it to them, we'll say, hey, you know, read it tomorrow when you're sober, just stuff like that. You know, the the the, the thing that's really cool about these two, especially these smaller ones, is uh, you know, you were talking about at you know uh, fast food places and stuff like that. What I like to do is I like to go to Walmart or any grocery store and go to the beer aisle. Because lots of people drink beer, okay? That's just, that's just the way it is. Lots of people drink beer. Back in the day, I used to be one of those people. I'm not anymore, praise God, but I used to drink a lot of beer. And if I had seen one of these, I may have gotten, you know, right before. But anyway, what I do is I like to go down the beer aisle. And the 20 packs or 24 packs, I can't remember what exactly it is. But what Budweiser and, and stuff like that, the people that made these cardboard boxes that the beer fit in, were so nice enough that when it shuts, it doesn't shut completely flush. And so there's just enough room to drop a track in these cases of beer. And, and it's really cool. It works really good. It, it fits perfect. Just drop them in the case of beer. And, uh, and the cool thing about that is, uh, is, is you know, beer is everywhere, so you can drop it. And there's not a lot of dry counties anymore, so you can drop them in there. And actually, one time, uh, I used to go to this Walmart all the time where I used to live in Keller. And I dropped them in there. And actually, one day when I walked in the store, there was a store manager there. And he, and I walked by him, and he followed me from the front of the store through the beer aisle. And I thought he was following me, so I didn't drop any in there at that time. And I walked, he followed me through the beer aisle. I walked in the beer aisle, and I started to walk off. And I watched him, and he turned around and walked the other way. So I turned around and went through, tracked all the beer. You know? <laughs> But but these things they're 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 very cool. Like I said, they'll preach the gospel for you when you're not around. They will remind people. And like Stephen was said, I mean, the only thing he had as far as a Bible was the children's Bible. This may be this these verses on the back of these because they all have verses. They all have gospel messages. That may be the only bit of Bible that that person has. Yes, the average American home has at least one Bible, maybe two, maybe yeah. more. You know, but there could be someone that doesn't. You know, back up. Uh, you know, back, it, it reminds me of, of, of back during uh, uh, the Soviet rise, whenever the Soviet Union was starting to rise, and, and communism and all that. They took over in Romania. And what happened is they had underground churches there because they had ruled out Christianity. People were being killed. People were being put in prison. And what would happen is they put out these little pieces, of, these little booklets that was this propaganda against Christianity. People would take those, the Christians, the underground churches would take those and say, here, let me help you pass those out. Because Bibles were outlawed and they couldn't get the scripture and they would pass them out. And people would take them. Of course, of course, the, you know, the, the communists thought, oh, they're taking it, we're, we're going on our deal. What was happening is people couldn't get the Bible. And because they had verses quoted, they had scripture on this propaganda 
garbage, that was the only Bible they could get. And that would be their scriptures. You know? And so that's that's these things are so cool. There's a and I can't remember exactly where it was, but there's a place, I believe it was in South Africa or England. And uh and there was a a, a guy out there, this little old man, and what had happened, you can look it up on YouTube, but there was a there there was a, a there was a guy who was in the Navy, and he went over there, and he was walking down the street, and he said, and, and this little old man walked up to him, George and had him, what's that? George Street. Yeah, George Street. And this little old man walked up to him, and he said, here. He goes, if you were to die tonight, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? And the guy was like, what? And so he turned around and left, and the guy started thinking about it. He got back to his ship, went to the chaplain, and said, look, man, I've got to get right with God. This guy gave me this piece of paper. And i got to get right, right now. And the chaplain said, man, you're drunk. Come talk to me tomorrow. And he came back and talked to him the next day. And he got right. And, and now, or well, this was probably about five years ago, he was head of all the Navy chaplains. There was a man who, who was a, a Hindu. And he went over there. And, he was up, and it was on a party street. He was out there partying and carrying on, getting drunk. And he said, this little old man walked up to me and said, here, if you're to die tonight, you're 100% sure you'd go to heaven. He said he was so messed up by it that he went and saw his Hindu priest mm -hmm. in his town when he got back home. And the Hindu priest said, I don't know what to tell you. Go on to the missionary down the street. Went to the missionary down the street, got born again. There was, there was another man who, he, he, was, uh, he had gone to this mega church and everything was great. And they went on this mission trip. And I'm sorry, most mission trips aren't mission trips. They're vacations. And he went on this mission trip and he went down there and he was partying. He got the same thing. Here you go. Are you 100% sure? you go to heaven if you died right now. He went home to his pastor and he said, Pastor, can you believe this little old man came up to me and handed me this piece of paper and said, if I was to die tonight, am I 100% sure I'd go to heaven? Well, what right does he have? And that pastor said, you know what? Never in my life have I known you did I ever think that you would go to heaven if you died. <laughs> so that guy got born again, later went back, found this little old man. He was looking for him, looking for him, looking for him, asking people, does anybody know of this little old man? Oh, yeah, everybody knew about him. Yeah, he lives over here. He went up and saw him. He met him. He lived in this little bitty apartment. Real old man. And he said, he said, can I ask you, you probably don't know this, but there are people all over the world that are telling a story about this little old man they met on George Street. And he said, well, I don't know about all that, but all I know is somebody one time handed me one, asked me that question. I was saved and I told God right then that I would spend the rest of my life handing out at least one of these a day. Every, you know, I'm pretty up in age, so every once in a while I get sick, so if I can't go out for two or three days, then that day I've got to hand out two or three of them. But I told him I would hand out one for every day that I could get out there. And that's what tracks do. They, they, they sit there and they sit in our pockets and they, and they, and they or, or the center's pocket. And, and you know what? They may throw them on the floor. They may tear them up. She's seen it. I've only seen it once or twice. A lot of people won't tear them up. A lot of times they'll get far away from you and throw it on the ground. You know, and you just say, hey, don't mess with Texas. <laughs> but, but that's what it does. It convicts when we can't be there. It does the work of the Bible if they don't have one. And here's another thing. If you're a Christian, and you're in this room, and someone goes to hand you a gospel tract, please don't get offended. Because I didn't know any of you except a couple of you before I came in here today. And I guarantee you, if you saw me on the street, I would probably hand you a track, because that's just what I do. Mm -hmm. Don't get offended. I'm not saying you're a sinner. I'm not saying you're hellbound. I don't know you from Adam. All I know is it's my job to share the gospel, and all I might be able to do is hand you a track. Mm -hmm. Don't get mad. Take that track and say, hey, praise God, thank you for this. Mm -hmm. You know, all the time we get, oh, I'm already a Christian. Uh. No. Take it, be thankful, and hand it off to somebody else. Please don't get offended. We don't do it because we're mean. We don't do it like you. We do it, as a matter of fact, because we love you. Yeah. We love people. We want to see people saved. We don't know if you're a Christian or not. You know? So if somebody gives you a track, you know, just say, hey, thanks, man. I'm pretty happy. excited. Be happy. Praise God. Somebody's out there doing it. And then take that track and give it to somebody else. But it's easy. You know, here you go. Did you get one of these? They gave good news, like he said. You know, and it, and it is kind of it is kind of nervous at first. I'll be honest with you. I went out with Stephen... Uh, the very first time I ever met Stephen, and we did some some evangelism, and then the next week he wasn't able to make it, or lost his number, or something happened, and I went by myself, and I had these tracks, and I was on the same corner. He's talking about across from where Billy Miners used to be. It's not there anymore, 
But across from Billy Miner's is, and I was all by myself, standing under these tracks. That's all I was doing. You know, and then, and then I started getting a little braver. Did you get one of these? Here you go. People would come up and tell me things. And of course, I, you know, I didn't know what to say. I was scared to death. You know, and another thing you hear is a lot of twisted scripture. And if I'd have thought about it, which I would now, but then I wouldn't. And it's okay. You you learn. You start thinking of things. But this lady took the track and handed it back to me. She said, "There's no condemnation with Jesus." That's twisted. <laughs> there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. But oh, Jesus has got a lot of condemnation. Read John three seventeen. Read the rest of it. And you'll find out. But that's the thing about these tracks. They're really cool. If, you, if you're not one that can get up on a, on, a, on a planter box or whatever and preach the gospel in front of people, okay. Stand there and pass out these tracks. If you're nervous, tracks are great. Like I said, put them in beer cases, man. And you know what? If you can find something else they'll fit in, put them in there too. The great thing I like to do is like a fast food deal. You drive up, here's your money. Oh, hey, by the way, get, when you get a chance, read this. Stephen back here, I was on the phone with him one day. Okay, and he pulled into a fast food place, and he's like, "Hey, hold on, just a minute." And, he, and I'm trying to remember how it went, but he asked the guy. He said, "He said, hey man, I'll tell you what, I want to buy an hour of your time." He gave the guy ten dollars. He gave him a—I don't know if we have one back there. We might, but he gave him a car that looks like this, but it's got the Ten Commandments on it. He said, "I want to buy an hour of your time. Here's ten dollars. I want you to learn the Ten Commandments." Yeah, that one right there. This, this one right here, it's the Ten Commandments. It's got a little picture on it, it's really cool. He said, I want to buy an hour of your time. Here's ten bucks. He said, how much do you make an hour? And he goes, like seven fifty or something. He goes, okay, well here's a little, I'm, I'm giving you a little bonus for your hour that you learned the Ten Commandments. I want to buy an hour of your time and for you to learn the Ten Commandments. Hmm. You know, she was talking about putting them in the gasoline pumps. A lot of times the gas pumps, they have little deals where, you, where it's like applications for credit cards, you know, to get, you can put them in there. The cool thing to do is put them uh, in bathrooms. Now, ladies, it's going to be a little different, but for men, you know, you have the stall, you, the, the urinal you walk up to, stick it right in there. It's right there. You can put these things everywhere. Another really cool thing, go to Barnes & Noble. <sighs> Young people these days have a fascination with vampires. Well, you know what? Give them some bookmarks. Walk through their stuff, books with these things. Put them in there. They'll be talking about how this vampire dude did something and all of a sudden, whoa, what is this? You know, it changed their life right there. Mm -hmm. These things can go where we can't and be where we can. They're amazing tools and uh, they work. They just flat work. Mm -hmm. um, you got Mark Hale that Stephen was talking about that wrote that book back there that you need to get. He talked about how he had handed a track to a lady on the way into a, uh, uh, he had preached at a church and they took him to dinner that night. And he happened to be walking up and he handed this girl a car, uh, or uh, a track. Later on he was in there and and, uh, and the girl was kind of scantily clad. He gave her one. She came into the restaurant where they were eating and saw him walk in. I mean, this is like a five-star place this church took him to. And she, I want that man. She went to him. She, had, she was actually a stripper. And she was on her way to work or something. And uh, she said, I need to talk to him. And she came to his table in front of everybody, repented right there. She said, you know what? Somebody gave these to me one time, and you gave this to me now. That's a sign. I've got to do something. And I read it, and I want to get right with God. Yeah. Things like that will happen. Going with him, man, you run into people all the time. Hey, man, you gave me a track, or you witnessed to me. Same thing. Big time with Jose. You could be in nowhere's bill, and somebody knows Jose, you know? It's just you, you run into people. You run it like there's a guy that I know that, that used to make fun of Stephen. He used to laugh at Stephen. And, and he now, I mean, he thinks highly of Stephen. He's born again now. And, he, and it's just, your families are going to think you're crazy. People are going to think you're nuts if you share the gospel. But you know what? They'll come around. Anyway, these are, these are really cool.